Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. Great to have you here today. Episode 2189 of the Cabral Concept. All the show notes and links will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2189. Today's going to be a fun topic because on our Wednesday shows, I like to make it about overall health, wellness, and just maintaining a healthy body weight for you. And just remember, whenever I talk about a healthy body weight, I'm talking about somewhere within that 30 to 40 pound swing for all individuals based on their height and their frame for what their body should be at. We never talk about, oh, you have to have six pack abs or be super super skinny or anything like that. That's not what I preach and it's definitely not what I talk about. What I talk about is maintaining overall health so that you can live a long, healthy life also without all the joint pain and being on a handful of pharmaceutical drugs, again, for the last 30, 40 years of your life. I don't want you to deal with that either. So, you know, we have to find this happy medium of what is a good weight for us, for our body, our dosha, our body type in order to be able to maintain for life. And so what I want to do is give you some quick tips and some really actionable things that you can do that most people aren't sharing with you because they have some type of marketing business-based agenda to get you to buy their special diet plan or have you eat like a caveman or whatever it might be. So what I want to do is always back it up by science, but also just share with you, these are things that we've known now for 6,000 plus years in Ayurvedic medicine. The difference now today, though, is that, sure, they knew this 6,000 years ago and somehow and all of their wisdom, but what we know now is, yeah, they were telling the truth, and we have the science to now back it up. So I like to share with you the science as well. That's what today's show is going to be about. It is a natural hormone, believe it or not, that can allow us to just not feel as hungry all the time. Now, this doesn't mean that you should undereat. I'm not saying that either. I have many shows that saying that, listen, if you're only eating one meal a day, it's going to be really difficult to get all the vitamins and minerals that your body needs. Now, I know that you can get your calorie requirements, right? You can get your macro requirements, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be getting all your micros, which are different than macros. Macros are proteins, fats, and carbs, and micros are more of your, well, they're called micronutrients, vitamins and minerals and specific amino acids, as well as omegas, et cetera. And these are things that lead to good brain health, good energy, less brain fog, more ambition, more libido, more drive, uh, just more overall zest and vitality for life. So sure, can get enough calories and get enough calories, believe it or not, just by drinking, you know, let's say a, a six pack of uh, Coca-Cola a day. But that's not, you know, that's that's going to be enough calories, but it's not going to be that healthy for you. Okay. So, well, not, not, it's not at all healthy for you. Right. But if we're just talking about calories, we're talking about calories. So obviously there's more than just calories. We want where the calories come from. And so that's so much of what we talk about. I'm going to give you that breakdown towards the end of the show of how to help secrete more, though, of this hormone called PYY. It stands for peptide YY or peptide double Y. You'll be hearing more about it in the future, but I just want to make sure that you've already heard about it, that you already have a foundational-based knowledge of it, because what happens is this is a 36-amino acid peptide. It is secreted in our own gut. That means in your small intestine. So your small intestine is about 21 feet or so long, 21, 23 feet. Again, depends on the height of the human being. And the thing is, we all produce this hormone inside of the small intestine. Now, again, it's called, it's from the endocrine cells called the L cells in the small intestine. Endocrine is essentially means endocrinology, which stands for hormones of the body. And you might say, well, this is my small intestine. How is that producing hormones? Remember, there are other things in the body that act like hormones besides testosterone, uh, DHEA, which is dihydroepiandrosterone. Uh, and then there is estrogen. And there's three forms of that. Then there's progesterone. There's actually different metabolites of that. So, you know, here's the thing, though. They're not all just 
produced in the ovaries, testes, adrenals of the body. You're also producing these hormones in other parts of the body. Believe it or not, melatonin acts like a hormone. Vitamin D can act like a hormone. So when we're talking about hormones, we're not always just talking about, you know, as we think of the sex hormones in the body. So this hormone though, believe it or not, it's made in your intestines a lot like Five, it's not like 5 HTP, but you know, we talk about serotonin coming from tryptophan and 5 hydroxy tryptophan, which is 5 HTP. And that serotonin, the happy, feel good neurotransmitter, then actually moves in the bloodstream as well. But it's synthesized uh, from food, from at least tryptophan, and it makes its way into the bloodstream. Well, this is what also happens if you're eating the right diet. This peptide YY is made in your small intestine. It moves through the gut wall as long as your gut is healthy, and then it moves in the bloodstream. Now, when it's in the bloodstream, it's actually then going to make its way to certain receptors that, again, if they're open to it, it's almost like um, your pancreas secretes insulin. Okay, well, now the insulin's in the bloodstream, but the cells still need to be receptive to insulin in order to unlock the cell to allow the glucose to get out of the bloodstream and into your cells. Well, peptide YY is the same. It has to bind to receptors that receive receive those signals in the brain, right? So what does that mean? Well, it basically means that we need to work on inflammation as well. And we say, oh, we need to work on inflammation. Should we just take a product like Inflamasooth? Well, Inflamasooth is a great product to be using. However, what we want to talk about is, is there a root cause for larger amounts of inflammation? And the answer is almost always yes. So while you are working on healthy levels of inflammation, by using a product like Inflamasooth, you also want to be saying, why do I have inflammation in my body? And you'll, you'll be able to figure that out. Some type of toxicity, some type of deficiency, greater amounts of omega-6s, lower amounts of omega-3s, heavy metals, gut dysfunction, et cetera. Okay, but we'll, we'll talk about that on additional shows, and we, we've chatted about that in the past as well. So let's talk about this, though. It makes its way to the brain. And then the brain does what? Well, now the brain sends signals of appetite suppression. This does not mean that you never want to eat food. I just want to kind of take a step back. It just means that it begins to work with your hunger hormones like leptin and ghrelin, right? We've talked about this before, and this is really important because people whose leptin and ghrelin levels are off, if, you don't, if you've never heard of leptin and ghrelin before and how it controls fat burning, and hunger, I'm going to link the, those shows up today, all right? So there's going to be two to three shows that I link up at stephencabral.com forward slash 2189. Because just remember, no one podcast is meant to teach you everything that you need to know about health or weight loss or hunger hormones, etc. If anybody's claiming to do that, that's an impossibility, right? I have about 15 to 20 minutes every single day to teach one topic and then say, oh, and maybe there, maybe check out this as well. Remember, that's how I read thousands of books. I read a book. People always ask, well, how would you know what books to read? I read a book and then the author talked about a different topic that I didn't know that much about. Then I read about that topic and then that introduced me to this and then this and then this. That's how it works. And you can do the same with podcasts. You know, back when I was reading all these books and I get, I still read uh, over a hundred books a year now, but back in the day I was consuming books Think about this. You know, for me, let's say from the year 2000 to 2010, the internet wasn't really what it is like now. It just, it wasn't, especially in the early 2000s. So again, I just consumed books. Now though, we have podcasts, we've got audio books, we've got all sorts of great things. Anyway, uh, back, back on topic here. So what happens is when the brain receives uh, the P peptide YY, right? So it receives this peptide YY, it starts to produce more satiety single signals. Satiety is just feeling satiated. It feels like, oh, I've eaten enough. I think we all of those times where we just feel like, oh, I just I, I could keep eating and eating and eating, right? That's what we're trying to work on. We're trying to suppress unnatural hunger. Meaning if you're 30 plus pounds overweight, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're 30 plus pounds overweight, though, think of it as just an imbalance in the ideal body that you would like to have. Again, we're not talking about vanity. We're saying, oh, if you were 30 pounds, again, not even talking about super skinny, just 30 pounds above your ideal body weight or more, you're saying that your body is just imbalanced right now. Okay, well, we just need to move it back into balance. So if your body's still hungry, you have to understand as well, you have 30 pounds of extra body fat 
that you can use as fuel. So it's it's not like we're trying to starve anybody or super suppress their appetite or take their calories too low. It's not that at all. You still want to maintain a healthy amount of calories so you don't slow your thyroid, slow your metabolism. I'm, again, I've got plenty of podcasts on that. But people do have excess hunger that they shouldn't have. I mean, that's just the way that it is. So what happens? Well, they're hungry. So they eat more food, more food than they need to. And again, we're just going to show you what to do in just a moment. So what does it do? Increases satiety. It inhibits uh, basically fast bowel motility. So if you're someone that's just kind of moving the food through your intestines without really absorbing it, well, this helps with that. It also inhibits uh, certain types of pancreatic hormone secretion. And hopefully in the end, it helps you decrease overall food intake to a healthy calorie amount. There's also plenty of studies that show that people who don't produce as much peptide YY or PYY, um, they have higher BMIs, body mass indexes, and obesity. And again, for all the people out there who are in great shape and they've got uh, low body fat, obviously BMI doesn't apply as much to you. I'm talking about 99.99% of the general population, right, that we're trying to help. So, Here's the thing. We know obesity leads to all of the top causes of mortality, such as cardiovascular disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. So all we're trying to do is help people live longer, happier, healthy lives. Okay. So I've given you my disclaimers there. So now what can we do? Well, here's the thing. Uh, initial studies on increasing PYY was associated with a higher fat diet. So a lot of people who know about PYY, not everybody does, but a lot of um, dietitians or maybe experts in the space, they're saying, oh, you know, be on a high fat diet, be on a high keto diet, be on this, be on that. That was the initial early research. And the reason was that they use that diet. And okay, that made sense because PYY did increase, um, but it increased for specific reasons. And one of those wasn't necessarily based on high fat, based on a certain calorie intake, lower amounts of calories, lower carbohydrates, etc. When they used different competing diets, what they actually found was that protein was the most potent stimulator for PYY released, followed by fat and then in a distant third, carbohydrates. So pretty interesting. So, because again, here's the thing. I, I knew that this worked, but never knew why. And the reason why I knew it is because when I was in uh, college, undergrad, and I was doing natural bodybuilding, I was taught that this is a bodybuilding diet when you want to uh, essentially get ready for a show uh, reduce your carbs, increase your protein. And, and that's what it was. And so I said, Oh, wow, this really worked. I got leaner. I maintained my muscle mass and I got my body to where I wanted to be naturally. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a Mr. I, whenever I say natural bodybuilding, I want to say like, listen, I'm not winning Mr. Olympia, right? I'm not even, I'm not even in a, a qualifier for anything. That's not what I was looking. I was simply looking to transform my body. That was it. And back in uh, college, if many of you know my story, you know, I was not a healthy individual. Uh, but what I was able to do was transform the outside of my body and give the appearance for myself and my psyche that I was healthy, right? So that helped me that helped me a lot, to be honest with you, it, it, it got me through what I needed to in order to then be able to figure out the final results. So here's the thing, though, in a bodybuilding diet, it's not ever typically a high fat diet. Now, people are manipulating bodybuilding diets now, but it was basically protein and veggies. Protein and veggies, what do we eat? Protein and veggies. Now, you definitely ate a good amount of carbs when you're trying to bulk up, but what do we do when we we're trying to uh, cut? Well, even back then, this is 22 years ago or so, we were using MCTs back then too. Pretty interesting, right? Uh, I thought I thought it was super interesting because those medium chain triglycerides actually acted as a pseudo carbohydrate for energy. So uh, anyway, I digress. Let me get back on topic. So one of the things that we do, whether it's for our, you know, functional medicine detox, uh, or it is, which is by Equalife, or it is for our fat loss system, you're looking at not a keto diet, you're actually looking at what we used to call leans and greens. And you're looking at protein, healthy proteins, of course, you, they can be vegan based, right? Or they can be paleo based. And, uh, we mix those with a good amount of vegetables and it's always worked. And we, so we ask ourselves, well, now why has it worked? Well, we have one more reason. So there's lots of other reasons, but now we have one more reason, which is an increase in PYY. Because when we get enough protein at each meal, it begins to create satiety. Now, before we used to attribute this to the thermogenic effect of food, and it's still true. 
Whenever you eat protein, it takes a longer amount of time to break down protein in your gut. That's basically, that's what it is. It, it takes more time, okay? There's a lot more energy than used to break down protein. So I don't want to go off on a tangent, but that's why a lot of people don't feel good when they eat a lot of protein in their diet because they don't have a lot of energy. And eating protein takes a lot of energy to break down, almost three times the amount of energy as breaking down fat or carbohydrates. Well, actually, is it more than that? Now, about four to six calories for, um, you know, for basically 100 calories of carbs or protein and about 30, sorry, carbs or fat and about 30 for protein. So as I'm doing the math right now, that's about what, 6x? Five, yeah, it's about five, six X the amount. I mean, so it's a lot more energy to break down protein. That's the interesting thing. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you're not actually then storing as many calories, but that was one of the reasons why we thought, well, okay, protein makes sense on a, uh, a cutting diet or trying to lose weight. But now we also know, well, it's preserving muscle mass, it's boosting metabolism, it's repairing muscle tissue, and it's helping with suppressing hunger hormones, as well as burning more body fat, as well as stabilizing blood sugar, right? All of these things matter. So what we found was, and I, I have another podcast on that, I'll link it up here today. If you are hungry within 60 to 90 minutes after a meal, it's almost always a lack of protein at that meal. And I'll link up that podcast because I go in depth on that. Okay. So that maybe that's you. So what we do is we make sure that every individual is getting enough protein and enough fiber at a meal. And it's worked phenomenally well uh, in our practice. So there's just a couple other parts. So I just gave you the kind of the, the formula for what increases PYY in terms of overall uh, meals. But here's the thing I want you to know. Berries are still also fine. Berries, and then again, this is all laid out in our fatlosity plan as well. We kind of take you through it. We eliminate fruit in the very beginning. Then we add back in the berries and it works. Again, it's scientifically based. It works great. There's no guessing. Um, healthy fats like avocados, which is technically a fruit, but it's not really a fruit, right? It's a fat, even though it's considered a, in the, the genus family of a fruit. Uh, that's, uh, it's a great uh, fat as well. But what I also want to add is this. You just want to keep it to three meals a day. You don't want to do snacks in between if you're really looking to lose a lot of weight. Now, back in my bodybuilding days, we would do five to six small meals a day. That works too for a person that has their metabolism boosted and their digestion is really strong. I just know most people's digestion is not super robust. It's just been broken down. It's imbalanced over the years. Too much gut bacteria, too much yeast overgrowth, maybe H. pylori, maybe parasites. And I definitely recommend um, testing that if you haven't already. There's a great test called the Candida Metabolic and Vitamins Test. Uh, you can also run the bacteria and parasite stool test. And then there's an IgG food sensitivity test. Those are all at stephencabral.com forward slash labs, or you can run them with your local naturopathic doctor or integrative health practitioner. Okay. A couple more things. You want to add in that 12 to 16 hour intermittent fasting window. Um, I've many, many podcasts on intermittent fasting. You can find them at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Scroll through the images at the top. You'll find all of my intermittent fasting podcasts if you don't know about intermittent fasting. And the last part is this. None of this is going to work if your gut is imbalanced, right? So that's that's why I want to just want to share that with you. People are like, I'm already doing this. I'm already doing that. I get it. I understand. If you do a functional medicine detox and don't lose weight, there's a gut issue and there's a hormonal issue. I mean, that's that's the bottom line, right? If you're struggling to still lose weight, find out why. Low thyroid, high cortisol, estrogen dominance, low progesterone, low testosterone, low vitamin D, high blood sugar. There's always a reason why. So again, run the big five labs if possible. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash big, the number five, uh, or at least run the starter kit, right? And that's stephencabral.com forward slash starter dash kit. Uh, but again, you don't have to run them with me and my practice, but at least see what they are and then run them with an IHP level two or a naturopathic doctor. But you need to figure out what the underlying root cause is. Because if you have massive gut permeability, you have candida overgrowth, you have SIBO, these PYY, the PYY is not going to be released like it should. There's too much inflammation in the gut, right? That's also the reason why there can be serotonin, uh, low mood depression issues, gut-based issues, autoimmune issues, gut-based issues, uh, and also people with histamine issues, lectin issues, et cetera. If the gut's imbalanced, it can't produce these certain enzymes that are needed like diamine oxidase to actually break down the histamine. So again, this goes in depth more than we need to talk about here today. 
but there's a reason for everything. There's a cause for everything in the body. You can figure it out through functional medicine lab testing or beginning to work the protocols, all right? So hopefully this was helpful here today. Lots more, again, like I said, available at stephencabral.com forward slash 2189 for today's show. I appreciate you. I thank you for tuning in and always feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much, as always, for tuning into the show. It means the world to me to see this community continue to grow, and I have you to thank for that. Well, keep making good on our promises. This is our second major game-changing debut in the same month in January to start off the new year, and that is with our longevity line. This is a true science-based, researched, longevity-based line that took over 12 months of research and formulation. It covers everything from our advanced renewal system, which is state-of-the-art mitochondrial boosters and natural inflammation balancers. Plus, we have our new daily hair support, which rivals any of the best hair DHT blockers and hair regrowth formulas on the market. Again, all based in science. We have our cardiovascular line, which helps with cardiovascular issues, blood pressure issues, uh, and in more in order to develop a nice, strong, healthy, vascular, and heart-based balance. We also have our new natural hormones-based line. This means if you have low testosterone, we can help you boost that naturally. Low progesterone, low estrogen, we can help you boost that naturally. Low DHEA, we can help you give that a boost as well amazing hormone baseline. We also then have our daily bone supports. We have our advanced CoQ10. We have our daily glucose supports. We have our daily vision and eye health product, which is sure to become one of our top ones out there, especially with how much we all view our computers and phones every single day. I can't go through it all right now, but again, there are so many amazing products that again are game changers. I've been using many of these in all sorts of different formulations, typically taking three or four different products to just get some of the nutrients in like a product like Cell Boost for the mitochondria for anti-aging for the last three years. I'm happy to debut these and they are all 20% off for life right now over at Equalife. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash longevity to see the entire line. Let us know if there's any questions. There's also a video on every single page explaining what that product is. Take advantage of it. 20% off for life over at stephencabral.com forward slash longevity.